Okay, so uh, we're going to do some uh, examples now. Uh, here's example one. Cars on the interstate. Of all cars on the interstate, 80% exceed the speed limit. What proportion of speeders might we see among the next 50 cars? Okay, so we want to estimate P, the proportion of speeders that we're going to see uh, in the next 50 cars. So that's what P hat is going to be. So first off, we have to check the 10% condition. Okay, so uh, uh, are, we, uh, are we looking at a sample size that is bigger than 10% uh, of our population? And I think I can safely say, no, we are not. Okay, the next 50 cars is way less than the population of all the cars on the, on the interstate out here. Uh, the success failure condition. Do we have at least uh, 10 successes and at least 10 failures? Well, uh, a success in this case would be somebody who's speeding. 80% of 50 is 40. And 20% of people are not speeding. And 20% of 50 is just barely got it. Ten, uh, that's 10. And remember, we have to have 10 or greater. So we got it there. And so now, let's find the mean and standard deviation. Well, I want the mean, the expected value of p hat. Okay? Well, the expected value of p hat is going to be, hey, remember what it is? It's p. That means the expected value of p hat is 0.8. It's going to be... Uh, it's going to be 80%. Okay? Now, I could go through this and say, well, I'm going to build a binomial model, and I'm going to see that my binomial model is going to have an expected value of 40, and then I'm going to take uh, uh, 40 out of 50 and see if that's going to be 0.8. Or I can just use what I've already learned about the expected value of p hat, and I know what it is. It equals p, and that's 0.8, or 80%. Now, what's my uh, standard deviation? The standard deviation of p hat is the square root of p q over n. Okay? And what is that? That's going to be the square root of 0.8 times 0.2 divided by 50. And that is, I've got to get out my calculator here, uh, 0.8 times 0.2 divided by 50 is 0.0032, and the square root of that is 0 0.057. 0 0.057. So uh, there you have it. Uh, we've just figured out that the expected value of p hat is going to be 80%, and the standard deviation of p hat is going to be about 5.7%. Now, explain the modeling context. All right. Well, uh, the uh, p hat is going to be the proportion of the next 50 cars. Now I could do that over and 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 over. And what I'm going to get is slightly different measurements of p hat. What's the average of all those p hats going to be? 0.8. How varied are they going to be? How spread out are they going to be if I were to plot them, if I were to make a dot plot or a histogram or something? How, how widely spread out would they be? Well, they would have a standard deviation of 0.057, okay? And I would expect that they would look fairly normally distributed, okay? So that means with that normal distribution, you know, how you can mark off about where a standard deviation is, well, 68% of our data would be within 0.057 of 0.8. All right, let's go to the next one. The next one is Harley-Davidson motorcycles, okay? Harley-Davidson motorcycles make up 14% of all the motorcycles registered in the United States. You plan to interview a simple random sample of 500 motorcycle owners. How likely is your sample to contain 20% or 20% uh, that should be or more who own Harleys? Okay. And uh, I'm sorry, that should be 20% or more and there should not be... Uh, 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 an apostrophe there in Harley's. That's a plural, not a possessive. Okay. Uh, well, what's a success? A success is that, remember, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm uh, interviewing a bunch of motorcycle owners. They could have Harleys, they could have Hondas, they could have Kawasaki's, they could have Suzuki's, they could have all sorts of different things. 
uh, a success will be a Harley. A failure, anything else. Um, so, uh, uh, and my success rate is 14%. So I know that P is going to be uh, P equals 0.14. But what I want to know is, what is my P hat? Okay? P hat is going to be normally distributed. Well, hold it. Is it really going to be normally distributed? Let's make sure. Uh, number one, um, uh, <laughs> I, forgot. I forgot my conditions. Uh, number one, were these randomly selected? There we go. Okay. Uh, SRS. Yes, they were. Okay. Number two, independence. Uh, is this, uh, are, is 500 uh, bigger than 10% of all motorcycle owners? No. No, it's not. Okay, so we're good there. And uh, number three, is the normal model appropriate? Well, let's see. 14% of 500 uh, is going to be, um, that's going to be 70. And that's way bigger than 10. And 86% of 500, I'm not sure what it is, but it's a lot bigger than 10. Okay? So good. Our conditions are met. Uh, so that means P hat is normally distributed, and it's got uh, a mean of 0.14, and it's got a standard deviation of the square root of 0.14 times 0.86 over 500. Okay? So that's what our distribution looks like. And I want to know what is the probability that p hat is 20% or bigger? So what's the probability that p hat is greater than or equal to 0.2? Okay, well, I'm just going to use my normal CDF, and I'm saying from, I want to know the probability that's between 0.2 and, well, 100%. My mean is 0.14, and my standard deviation is that thing, the square root of 0.14 times 0.86 over 500. Okay? All right, let's do it. Um, we're going to take a second distribution. I'm going to go to normal CDF, and remember 0.2 comma 1 comma, 0.14, comma, and uh, for this, let's see, for my standard deviation, I'm going to take the square root of 0.14 times 0.86 divided by uh, 500, and that gets me 5.52 times 10 to the negative fifth. Whoa, baby. 5.52 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, so let's see. 5, 5, 2. So it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 0 0.00005.52. Yikes. That is really, really unlikely. Uh, basically, that's saying about a 1 out of 18,000 chance. Um, I'm going to say it's not going to happen. Uh, that is extremely unlikely. That's kind of surprising, isn't it? I mean, 14%, 20% is not that different. Well, once you start asking 500 people, it gets really, really different. Okay. Next example. Lefties. Suppose that about 13% of the population is left-handed, and I think that's true. A 200-seat high school auditorium has been built with 50 with 15 lefty seats, seats that have the built-in desk on the left rather than the right arm of the chair. In a class of 90 students, what's the probability that there will not be enough seats for the left-handed students? Okay. Well, let's see. First off. What's the proportion here? 15 over 200 
is uh, that is 0 0.075. Okay, and what I'm saying is, what is the probability that 0 0.075 will not be big enough? That is, I'm saying, what's the probability that p hat turns out to be bigger than 0 0.075? That's what we want to know. Okay. Well, let's see. First off, um, in a class of 90 students, what's the probability that there will be... No okay, uh, I'm going to assume, and it has to be an assumption, I'm going to assume that these students were chosen randomly with respect to handedness, okay, whether they were right or left-handed. Um, and that has to be an assumption because it's not stated anywhere else. Uh, so that's our, our random selection. Independence now. Um, uh, it's a class of 90 students. Oh, 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 oh. I did this wrong. Oh, shoot. And it's on video and everything. It's a class of 90 students. So that means it's not 15 over 200. It's 15 over 90. Ugh. And 15 over 90 is, uh, it's... One sixth. Okay, so I want to know what's the probability that p hat is bigger than one sixth. That's ah, probability that p hat is bigger than one sixth. That's what I'm checking out. Okay, so now back to our conditions. Ninety students, way less than ten percent of our student population, so I'm not worried about that. And uh, and then finally, I want to make sure that I have at least uh, ten expected. Uh, successes, that is lefties, and 10 expected failures. 13% uh, of 90 is, I'm not sure what it is, but uh, it's, it's slightly, well, let's make sure. 0.13 times 90 is 11.7. So yes, that's bigger than 10. And, uh, and then, um, of course, 87% is, uh, is going to be the, prob the probability of right-handedness, and 0.87 times 90 is way bigger than 10, so that's not a problem either. Okay, so yes, we can assume that p hat is normally distributed with a mean of 0.13 and a standard deviation of the square root of 0.13 times 0.87 over 90. Okay? So the probability that p hat is bigger than one sixth is simply going to be normal CDF of from one sixth, I'm going to say all the way up to all of them, 100%. And again, my mean is 0.13. My standard deviation is the square root of 0.13 times 0.87 divided by 90. And so, let's do it. Uh, I get, okay, there we go. Um, again, distribution, normal CDF. I'm going to go from 1, 6. I just do 1 divided by 6. Up to 1, comma, 0.13 is my mean. And my standard deviation is the square root of 0.13 times 0.87 divided by 900 and close that out and I get 5.36 times 10 to the negative fourth 5.36 times 10 to the negative fourth so that's 1, 2, 3, 4 0, 0, 0, Point zero, zero, zero five, three, six, uh, also known as about one out of uh, 1,850. Okay? So the probability that there will not be enough seats for the left-handed students is uh, about one out of 1,800, which means uh, I think they're going to have enough. I think they will. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Example four, SAT scores. 
SAT scores should have a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 100. What about the mean of random samples of 20 students? College Board assures us that the SAT results are normal, okay? So, uh, let's see, check the random sampling condition. Uh, it says random sample of 20 students, so okay, we're good there. Uh, check the 10% condition. Uh, is 20 greater than 10% uh, of all the students in the world? No. Uh, check the independence assumption. Uh, well, uh, do we have... Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Um, that, that is to say, does one person's SAT score affect another person's SAT score? If it's a random sample, no, they don't. So we're good there, too. And, uh, uh, and then is N big enough? If the College Board assures us that the SAT results are normal, that is to say our population already is normal, N's big enough. Doesn't matter what N is. Okay? So, uh, what does this mean in context? Well, um, oh, I think that's referring to the independence assumption. Well, the independence assumption means, uh, does one person's SAT score affect another's? And if the, again, if the people are truly randomly chosen, then no, they don't. So I want to know, what's the probability that my sample of students will have a mean SAT score that is less than 450? Hmm, okay. Well, this time I'm looking for uh, X bar. That's my sample mean, okay? And the expected value of X bar is going to be 500. The standard deviation of X bar is going to be the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Uh, the original standard deviation is 100. That's our population standard deviation. And uh, we have 20 students here, so that's divided by the square root of 20. And so that's what our standard deviation is. It's, uh, let's see, 100 divided by the square root of 20 is approximately 22. Okay? And I want to know what's the probability that my sample students have a mean SAT score that is less than 450. So what's the probability that my sample mean is going to be less than 450? Okay? Well, again, uh, the population was normal. That means X bar is also going to be normal. So I'm going to take my normal CDF second distribution, normal CDF. I want to know uh, that it's, I want to know that it's less than 450, so I'm just going to go from 0 up to 450. I could go from 200 to 450 because I think that's, 200 is actually the lowest score that they can make, but 0 is also going to work. So from 0 to 450, my mean is 500, and my standard deviation is 100, divided by the square root of 20. And what do I get? I get 0 0.0126. So, about 1.3, oops, I wrote that wrong, 1.3%. Okay? So, uh, very unlikely, I'd say. Okay? It is extremely unlikely that my sample of students is going to have a mean SAT score that is less than 450. And uh, uh, since this is, um, since this is a, a, a symmetric distribution, that means it's also very unlikely that I would have a mean SAT score that is greater than 550, since my mean is 500. Uh, four, 450 is 50 away from the mean, and 550 is also 50 away from the mean. So, uh, hmm, okay, that means I would really expect my, uh, my mean score to be fairly close to 500, or within 50 of it. Okay, next example, more cars. Okay, speeds of cars on a highway have a mean of 52 miles per hour and a standard deviation of 6 miles per hour and are, less, and are likely to be skewed to the right, okay? Which means, let's see, if it's skewed to the right, 
That means we got a few people out here just driving like lunatics, and most of us are fairly reasonable. Okay, so describe what we might see in random samples of 50 cars. Okay, so first off, let's check our conditions. Uh, is this a random sample? It says random sample. Yes, it is. Okay, check the 10% condition. Uh, we're looking at 50 cars. Is that uh, less than 10% of our population? Yes, it is. Uh, check the independence assumption. Okay, uh, I'm going to say that yes, the speed of one car is truly independent from the speed of uh, another car if they are truly randomly chosen. Now, if it's a cluster sample and all the cars are together, uh, then actually this is an assumption uh, that we're making here because I can Im imagine that the cars that if I'm traveling in a pack of cars, if that pack is going pretty fast, I'm likely to go faster as well. So, eh, I'm not sure about that as an independence assumption. Um, and that's what the independence assumption means in context. And now what I want to know, assuming, assuming that all those things are true, that I've met my conditions, what's the probability that the mean speed of your sample of cars will be no more than 45 miles per hour? Well, uh... The probability that the mean speed of my sample of cars will be no more than 45 miles per hour. So what's the probability that x bar is going to be less than or equal to 45? And by the way, less than or equal to or less than in this particular context, it doesn't matter which one you use because this is a normal distribution, it's a continuous distribution, and so that's just, you know, I can say or equal to, but it just doesn't matter. Okay, well, let's see. X bar is normally distributed, I know that, uh, or at least I'm assuming that. It's normally distributed, and I've got a mean of 52, and I've got a standard deviation of 6 divided by the square root of n, so it's going to be the square root of 50. Okay. And so, if I want to know what's the probability that uh, x is going to be less than 45, well, that's normal CDF. You know something? Hang on a second. 6 divided by the square root of 50 is 0.84. Okay? Let's think about this for a second. My standard deviation is 0.84. My mean is 52. I want to know the probability that it's going to be less than or equal to 45. That's 7 away from the mean. That's more than 7 standard deviations away from my mean. Uh, you know, I can work this out, but I can already tell you right now, it's going to be tiny. Absolutely tiny. Well, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, normal CDF, uh, I want to go from 0 to 45, where my mean is 52, and my standard deviation is, uh, oh, that last thing I just calculated, so I'm going to say answer. Okay, and, <laughs> well, that's pretty small. It's 0, okay? Basically, it's so small that the calculator can't even handle how small it is. So, what the calculator says is, it ain't going to happen. Uh, it says, the mean speed of your sample of cars will absolutely be bigger than 45. It will definitely be bigger than 45. And assuming that our, our X bar really is normally distributed, I can be equally sure that it's going to be, let's see, 45 is 7 less than our mean. I can be equally sure that it'll be less than 59, because that's 7 greater than our mean. So, um, as you can see, once your n starts getting a little bit big, the standard deviation gets really, 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 really small. Okay? Alright, I hope these examples have helped you.